Catalonia were asking for. He did not do this. So the government of Spain will take the measures required to recover legality. That was Mariano Rojoy speaking a short while ago. Now, for more on this story, we can go across to Juan Ramon Racina, Professor of Iberian Studies at Stanford University. Thank you very much for joining us on the program this evening. Now, the parliament in Catalonia represents 48% of the population, and less than half of the region's population actually went out to vote in the referendum on the 1st of, of October. Is this push for independence democratic, in your opinion? If uh, you consider democracy to be the rule of a majority, yes, it is democratic. Also, if you consider democracy to be the application of uh, existing laws, it is democratic according to the laws approved by this parliament, by the Catalan parliament. So what we have here is a clash of, uh, of uh, legalities. Uh, on, on terms of the, in terms of the, uh, uh, the amount of people who voted in the referendum, uh, you have to put that in the context of the extraordinary uh, deployment of violence that the Spanish government uh, uh, introduced in, in in that election or in that referendum, and also the fact that uh, 700,000 people did not show up uh, because the uh, polling stations, a number of them, were closed down. Um, the results, nonetheless, with uh, over 2 million people voting, were overwhelming uh, in favor of uh, independence. And uh, any uh, simple mathematical calculation indicates that in order for the no to have uh, uh, gone uh, uh, through over, in other words, to have won, uh, it, we would have had to have a uh, participation of at least 70 percent, which is unheard of in any normal elections. But those who did not want independence didn't vote, because Madrid had already said that the referendum would be deemed illegal. Those who did not want uh, independence uh, did not vote, and many who wanted independence possibly did not vote, because they were prevented from uh, doing so. Then there's a number, a great number, a great area of people who are uncertain about uh, how to go, a uh, month ago, who, given the situation, may well have inclined their votes one way or the other. So it is really uh, hypocritical to uh, boycott the elections to then make it a show of force to prevent people by using the batons, by using uh, uh, forbidden uh, 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 rubber bullets, which are illegal in Catalonia, and then claiming that, uh, you know, participation, participation was, was somewhat below what uh, one would desire. This is a, a totally hypocritical position to take. Then, once again, it should be said time and again that the number of people uh, not favoring necessarily independence, but favoring the right to decide, favoring a legal and legally binding referendum, is 80 percent of the Catalan population. No. 80 percent. So that only leaves 20 percent who are definitely and uh, irrecoverably against it. Now, Catalonia is one of the most autonomous regions in Spain. Why do those who want independence still feel a sense of repression? Because Catalonia uh, should be uh, one of the most, uh, should be a, a, a fully autonomous uh, uh, regional community or autonomous community within Spain, uh, according to uh, written law, according to the statutes of autonomy. Uh, in practice, the uh, uh, competences of the Catalan government have been curtailed time and again, particularly in recent years under the uh, government of Mariano Rajoy, precisely, who, uh, back in 2006, took the statute of autonomy that had been approved by a Spanish Congress and by referendum by the majority of the Catalan people, took it to the Constitutional Court for it to be uh, curtailed and, in fact, voided. Now, that was an unconstitutional move. If anybody knows the Spanish Constitution, uh, that person also knows that once a law that has been passed by Congress and then approved by referendum, that is terminal. That becomes organic law. It is the ruling law in the state. Mariano Rajoy and his party went against that, uh, used a constitutional court that had members whose term had expired, um, uh, expelled from that uh, constitutional court the one Catalan member, and then voted to curtail, to eliminate the articles that he didn't like. Do you think invoking Article 155 of the Constitution will backfire on the Spanish prime minister? It is possible, because the invocation, uh, the way it has been invoked, the, the way it has now been approved by Senate, is unconstitutional. It takes on uh, powers that are not legally inscribed in the Spanish Constitution. So there we have now uh, a problem that, uh, uh, in order to restore so-called constitutional legality, uh, the Spanish government, the Spanish Senate, in fact, now goes against the uh, Constitution itself. 
Now, how do you view Carlos Puigdemont in all of this? Because he's been going back and forth for the past 26 days. We thought he'd declare independence, then he didn't. He continually failed to clarify if he had declared independence. Then we thought he'd call for elections, but then he backtracked somehow. And he passed the buck onto the Catalan parliament. Is he single-handedly responsible for this crisis? Uh, that, it's an interesting question. Mariano Rajoy has made him singly responsible for the crisis, uh, and at the same time, his party uh, has now uh, vowed to prosecute the entire uh, Catalan government, and not only the government, but all of the uh, parliamentary deputies who have voted for independence. So um, there we have a contradiction in terms, you know, who is ultimately responsible? My answer is that uh, Carlos Puigdemont has finally, after a lot of hesitation, implemented the mandate given to him by the Catalan voters. Uh, then, secondly, yes, this hesitation also shows that he is a man who is extremely flexible and has been willing until the 11th hour, until very, very late in the game, uh, to uh, back down and to negotiate with Mariano Rajoy, with the Spanish government. Uh, but yesterday morning, uh, at noontime over there, uh, he realized, finally, that Mariano Rajoy was intent upon triggering 155, which is really an excuse for something that's midway between uh, what 155 was supposed to be, which is merely uh, the correction of some kind of administrative uh, disagreement between the regional government and the central government, and a full-fledged state of exception. When uh, Puigdemont realized that even if he called for early elections and returned the Catalan parliament to the traditional, uh, more limited, uh, uh, autonomous uh, prerogatives, uh, even so, Mariano Rajoy was going to pass 155 in order to take over uh, the Catalan institutions and direct and, and institute direct rule from Madrid. Juan Ramon Resina, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us on the program this evening. My pleasure. Now, despite the celebrations on the street in Barcelona, the push for